What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'll be with you this week. We have Thursday off. I believe Wednesday is a half day, but we'll figure that out after this. Um, and then I'll be with you Friday as well. Um, let's take a look what we've got going on. We have the E-mini uh, kind of sideways right now overall in the market. The E-mini uh, up about 0.16%. The Russell Futures down 0.72%. Uh, the NQs up about 0.52%, and those Dow futures also sideways, and same with the Dow Jones in general. Um, I don't know where the comp is, somewhere down here, up about 0.72% uh, right now. Uh, silver's up slightly, gold completely flat right now. Uh, copper up about 0.5%, still well under the 520 area we were trading at, trading at 440 on that. Crude oil got a little bit of a pop as well, trading kind of up in the upper uh, trading range. <clears throat> and then, you know, one of the big things, of course, for today is Tesla up 6.3%. Uh, so, I mean, like, it's this is a strange move for this stock, right? So, analysts are expecting that deliveries are going to be lower than anticipated, right? You have some argument that the Chinese market has rebounded uh, a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, so that might... Um, add some to it. But the question is, is why is this up at 6.4%? Okay, the put call ratio is pretty decent in favor of like a higher price for this stock. Um, the big thing that I'm seeing people kind of harp on, which is an interesting idea, but is Tesla energy. Okay, so, you know, they have everything for like storage. Uh, they had the solar panels, the Tesla batteries they were putting on houses. Uh, this kind of went away in the general conversation. But they just saw, uh, signed an, uh, excuse me, a 100 megawatt megapack contract with New Zealand. Uh, that's $100 million. So we can look through that. The new battery storage system uh, will store excess renewable electricity when demand is low and will provide enough electricity to power 44,000 homes for more than two hours during winter when the demand is high. It's interesting. Uh, the company has also had the option to expand battery capacity to 130 megawatts at the site. And supposedly, this is supposed to bring in about $7 billion in, in revenue. Um, but I, I don't see... Let's see here if I can get the exact number. Yeah, okay, so Tesla Energy is projected to generate around $7 billion in revenue this year, which is a 20% increase. I don't know if that correlates properly to a 6.3% in the stock. This is what's so weird about looking at Tesla, right? Um, you know, you obviously have a lot of, like, retail investor hype around it. A lot of it has to do with what Musk's talking about. I couldn't find any major news with them beyond this uh, that drives this. I saw some communication on Reddit uh, talking about, hey, let's just, like, squash the shorts and everything like that. Um, but it's such an interesting stock. You know, I, I mean, again, I would argue that a lot of people, you know, tend to invest in the stock not because solely of the performance, but really how Musk acts and how he talks, um, which is, you, you know, the approach to this uh, tends to be kind of a unique. Um, so regardless, that's what I'm seeing a lot of people stand on. Most likely deliveries will be lower <clears throat> than the uh, than they were last year. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But we're up 6.2% for the time being, which I find insane uh, for that stock. One second here. All right, we actually have a call. This is Costa in Boston looking at NVIDIA. Costa, how you doing? Good, how are you, sir? Doing well. What are we uh, taking a look at regarding NVIDIA? I'd like to know where the buy point is on a pullback. Yeah, that's kind of a hard... <laughs> I asked myself the same thing with this stock, right? We have moved so astronomically in this stock over... The past year, it's been insane. You know, we're sitting at $3 trillion right now. This is a major move. My major concern with this stock right now, and here's the thing, right? So if we trace back, the last day with volume was, what, around June 5th, and the low of that day was around 118. I still think we have a little bit to move down in this stock, not <clears throat> significantly, right? And this isn't so much to do with technicals, just kind of looking how this stock has been trading. I think we still have a little bit to move in, but there's no doubt in my opinion, that NVIDIA is a decent investment right now, right? I don't think this is a short-term play. I think it's a long-term. I don't know if by the end of the year we're going to get another ramp up, right? My major concern, I would say, going forward with NVIDIA is 
how much more are these massive buyers? And we're, we're talking, you know, mainly Meta, uh, Google, Amazon. These are the major buyers. Do they have it in them, these companies, to continue to buy all of these new chips constantly every year just to update their systems? I don't think so, right? I still think we're going to sit around this three trillion point. It's for when you want to get in. I would structure it maybe in a sense, like if I were doing this, I, I put in, you know, like $400 or whatever into NVIDIA right now, see what it does the month over, and uh, kind of adjust from there. We are reaching that, like, last day with volume. I mean, we broke through, what, this level around 123.21, and we're down here. So if you want to get in, uh, this doesn't look like a super bad position to be in, um, but I don't know, you know, we're decreasing volume right now to the downside, which is somewhat bullish, right? Um, I just, I think this is so news driven, right? So if someone else comes out and we have another big tech company that wants to buy a bunch of NVIDIA, we're, we're going to be fine in the clear. I just don't know, at least investing right now for me, um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a super high target for it just because I think we're sitting at 3 trillion. That is what, six times the global semiconductor market last year. Um, I just don't know how much higher this stock has to go right now before we get some more major news. So that's, that's kind of my input on it. Um, as far as like an exact price point, I, I can't really say. But, you know, if you wanted to get in and I, I don't think we're going to go much lower in this stock is essentially kind of what I'm trying to say. But on the long term, it's something to keep in mind about their market, who's buying and will those buyers continue to be buying um, like they have been over the past year or two uh, in the near future. That's something to consider, I would say. Okay. I'd like to buy 100 shares. The 100 shares of the stock? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I said, I, uh, the semiconductors are dominant. It's not going anywhere. That's what I love when Basil comes on, right? He talks about, this is the new oil, and he's so right. And we are digitalizing everything, you know, and we're going to continue to. I just get concerned with NVIDIA for myself. I don't know what stimulates the, the massive pop-up in it, right? It's mainly news, but I can't predict when these major companies are going to buy a bunch of them. We, they've already purchased so many semiconductors already, and we still have a long horizon, I think, before we start seeing that, you know, really pay off, right? That's, that's kind of my look at it, Costa. Okay, sir. Thank, Thank you. Costa, thank you so much for calling in. Folks, uh, we'll be All right back with Steve Rose.